and it's time to celebrate like it's 1945 because that was the last time a high school public school football team from Beaufort County won a state championship until last night. And goal. Season, you know, our goal was to actually come to win the state championship, not to just get back here like last year. But you know, we put in the hard work, weight room, football field, watch film, everything. You know, everything just put everything in place, and now we we'll state champions. Loco football fans, welcome to our final edition of Loco Pigskin Live for the season. Uh, sort of plausibly live because we, we are now 24 hours or so removed uh, from Buford High School winning the first public school state championship in high school football uh, for Buford County since 1945. And, and what a celebration it was, guys, and, and what a great night for Buford. Uh, obviously did not get off to a great start, falling behind 14 to nothing right off the bat. Uh, but we've seen that team in this place so many times before, and and just like we expected them to, and like they have every time before, uh, they fought back, clawed back, and, and were back in it down three at halftime and just dominated the second half. They made the adjustments that we've seen them make all year long and, and wore down Powdersville, uh, a Powdersville team that I thought came out really hot. You know, I, they, they were juiced up and they came out really playing hard, hitting hard. Um, you know, Dylan, you were even saying like, they're going to over pursue, they're going to be so hyped up. Um, and, and I think they kind of punched themselves out a little bit to use that heavyweight fight analogy that we used in the preview, kind of punched themselves out in the first half and, and Buford was able to wear them down and, and just take it away in, in the second half. But, um, you know, we, we talked all the way home, Wes, about uh, how exciting it was to just see that community go wild for it. Uh, not every, not just everyone in Buford, but everyone who's ever passed through Buford, it felt like was, was, you know, hyping it up for, for Buford uh, last night. And uh, man, what a great celebration it was. And, and speaking of that, you know, we no better way to to kick off our little celebration here of Buford High State Championship with than with the biggest Eagles fan of them all, Jimmy Searson, seen over 600 games, and he finally saw the one he's been waiting for. Jimmy, uh, your state champs, buddy. I, I know uh, it probably hadn't even sunk in yet because I'm not even sure you slept last night and you had to go hard all day. But but how's it feel to to finally be state champions? Yeah, it feels great. I didn't know if I would ever see a state um, championship uh, for Buford in my lifetime, but God blessed me with one and what a game it was. But I, yeah, I'm still uh, can't believe it. I mean, it's exciting to finally see them win one. Jimmy, congratulations to you as a longtime fan, super fan of, of Buford. I mean, it's got to be an incredible feeling for you to, to see them finally bring one home and win that high school league state title first one since 1945 historic achievement and you were there for this big win as Buford took it home but just describe I mean we were able to cover it as, as reporters as journalists but I, I want to hear what it was like as a fan sitting over there in the stands through the game I mean down 14 nothing to, to how are you feeling at that point to, did you still have some faith that that Buford would come back and you know what was that point where where you thought that we're going to bring this home. We're going to win the state championship. Yeah, when Buford got down 14 to nothing, um, yeah, I was worried. But I know um, Buford's a second-half team, you know, and most of their games this year, they've been trailing. Um, well, I should say the in the playoffs, they've been trailing um, at the half and came back and won. So I still had faith in my boys, and um, they were able to pull it through. But, yeah, Buford's – you know, a great second half team. And um, the second half, um, Powdersville just couldn't stop Buford's running game, you know, with Kate, um, Casey Fields and Colton Ferris. Um, yeah, Buford's, man, running game with over 400 yards. Um, yeah, um, that's a two headed backfield. And then you could say with Samari Bonds, really a three headed backfield. 
He didn't yeah, they didn't really even have to use Samari. They didn't he only ran it twice and didn't throw it at all, and they rolled up 424 yeah. yards. So we're we're calling it the 10 and two offense because you know you just keep your hands on the wheel at 10 and two and keep handing it to 10 and two, and uh, they couldn't until they stop it. There, there's no reason to do anything yep. else. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Get they just couldn't going. stop it. You know, um, with uh, fairs and um, fields. I mean. Both of them, you know, Casey Fields had over 200 yards rushing and um, Colton Fairs had almost 200. Um, yeah. But, yeah, they're just hard to stop. Um, you know, Jimmy, you saw the last year's game against South Point and it was a disappointing loss. And then I think, if I recall, in 2008, you know, the Clover game, that was another disappointing loss. Well, how does it feel for you to finally get to a state championship and, and you know, see the guys pull it out and win it? Yeah, it feels awesome. Yeah, um, I was happy they made it last year against South Point. But, yeah, South Point was just something else last year. Um, but I just knew this group of guys um, could make it back this year. Um, but this overall Beaufort team, I would have to say this is, I mean, a really good team. You know, overall, you know, before they had one or two superstars, but this whole team from the offensive line, defensive line, um, special teams, I mean, they were great this year. Um, they all work well together. Um, so I was finally happy to see a state championship. It's a complete and, team and, and a well-rounded team, really, from, yes. from every position, offensive, defense. All 11 guys were, were dialed in down the stretch and in the playoffs. And, man, the rise of that secondary with some guys like Tamar, Jamar Knight, uh, Dom Camacho uh, mm -hmm. were, were really an important factor. And then Will Connie had a, a terrific last few games and, and really delivered their mm -hmm. uh, linebacker, really big presence there in the heart of the defense. And then, you know, Hart Cushman playing both ways in the line, instrumental to, to that offensive line, and then plowing through force and a fumble there on defense. And uh, what were your, obviously, uh, many, the, the, the biggest moment was, of course, that at the end, winning the state title. But uh, what were your favorite plays? What were your favorite individual moments uh, from, Thursday night. Yeah, my favorite moments um, was just seeing the big crowd. It looked like almost the whole, you know, town in Beaufort was out. And um, there was even people from all over the loco there. Um, so it was good to see the big crowd there and just the atmosphere. I mean, I loved having the games at Benedict. You know, mm -hmm. um, I like the games at williams Price Stadium, but with Benedict, with the intimate feel and um, – I mean, just the excitement in the air and um, just seeing, uh, you know, Coach Librand on the sidelines. I don't know if y'all saw him, but he was trying to get the crowd hyped. And oh, yeah. I love when a coach does, does that. <laughs> Yo. So, man, it was just amazing atmosphere at the game. And I'm glad a lot of people showed up for it. It really was. I'm so glad Pattersville brought their band and, and we got to get more kids yeah. in the band at Beaufort, man. We got to get that thing pumped back up. Uh, or maybe next year we got call over to call over to Battery Creek and see if maybe they can bring that yeah. band <laughs> up and, and help uh, support because uh, Pattersville had it rocking, though. They, they had the band rocking and man, that adds so much to the atmosphere. Uh, it was it was just terrific you. from start to finish. Yeah, Pattersville had a great band, but I hope to see Beaufort's band. Um, you know, get big again. You know, when I was at Buford, uh, we had a great band. We had um, over 200 members. Um, so I'm hoping the band continues to grow. But, yeah, Powdersville had an awesome band. And like you said, it brings excitement to the game, you know. Well, you know, we talk all the time about you being the super fan from Buford, but you're not just a fan. I mean, you play you play football for Buford, too. So, you know, what's it feel like yeah. as an alumnus, as, as somebody who – you know, you you tried to get to that mountaintop, and and now these guys did. Do you feel a little bit of a brotherhood with these these guys that uh, that finally conquered the goal? Yeah, I'm so happy for them. You know, I got to talk to um, some of these kids and just see their excitement. Um, but yeah, I played for Buford um, under Greg Hall, Coach Greg Hall, and we had a couple good teams, but nothing like this. I think um, we made it to the uh, third round of the playoffs one time, but. This Buford team overall is um, amazing. I mean, athletes everywhere. And it's just cool to see them jail as a team and come together like this. And uh, Buford has a great group of kids. And 
I love talking to them this year and you the um just I mean the excitement in their you know voices and all that it was it, it was an amazing year. Yeah, and, and Coach Lever had a lot of good things to say about just the camaraderie and the chemistry between these guys. They just love playing together. And mm -hmm. Coach Lever said, and, and we'll talk to him later, that, you know, he was very grateful that they spent the maximum amount of time uh, all the way to the, the mm -hmm. final game of the year together. So uh, what's so many great memories made by this team throughout just a, an incredible season. And uh, you were a part of it from, from start to finish. So, you know, I mean, I think it really all starts at the top from, from the coaching staff and, and Bryce Lybron. I mean, now all that he has done, three region titles, uh, two strips to the state championship, and now the big prize of them all, uh, the the first state title in, in Buford history since 1945. I mean, just the, the legacy of that is, is going to live on forever in, in Buford and, and low country sports lore. I mean, just your thoughts on the significance and, and just the, the cultural history to, to bring home a title after – Loco has been shut out for, for decades on decades, and uh, it just goes yeah. to show how special this team is and, and the drive of Bryce Labyrinth in this group. Yeah, I agree with you. This is a special team led by Coach Labyrinth, and what an amazing job that Coach Labyrinth has done. Um, I mean, he's been here, you know, four years as the head coach and one year uh, under Devontae Holliman, you know, as the offensive coordinator. And, um, Man, he's done an amazing job, and I hope Coach Lyfren stays here for a long time. I mean, him and his coaching staff, I mean, they work well together, and the kids love them. Um, but, yeah, they've done an amazing job this year, and um, I can't say enough about Coach Lyfren. He's, he's a wonderful guy and a wonderful coach, so I hope he stays here for a long time. You know, statistically – this will go down as one of the best teams in Buford High history. But talent-wise, do you think these guys were one of the best teams to step on the field for the Eagles? I think so. Overall, um, you know, athletic, um, I think so. You know, um, Buford's had some great players, especially running backs. You know, Buford's always yeah. um, been known for the running backs. Uh, but this overall team, you know, Casey Fields, he deserves to play at a Division I school. Um, yeah, Casey Fields, I mean, what can you say about him? And then Colton Ferris, I mean, he's the Colton Ferris is probably the best overall athlete I've seen at Buford. I mean, he could do it, you know, on the kickoff returns, punt returns, running the ball, um, covering opposing teams, um, receivers on the defensive side. But overall, yeah, this team is probably one of the best – uh, athletic teams I've seen in my life. And I, I would suggest just the best the team chemistry too. I mean, just yes. so the, and it starts at the top. It, it starts with Bryce Labyrinth and it goes all the way down with the coaching staff and, and it trickles down and, and they're just very organized, very detail oriented. Everybody knows what's going on. They know their roles. Um, and, you know, Bryce said all season long that these kids just don't panic. And I think it's in large part because the coaches don't panic because they know that we've got a plan. And as long as we stick to it, everything's going to work out. And, and they've instilled that mm -hmm. in the kids. And, um, you know, there was just a confidence and, and uh, easiness about them at all times that they just felt like they had things under control, it seemed like. So um, I was really impressed with them. And uh, you, you talk about Devontae Holloman. Talk about a win-win. Devontae Holloman leaves and Buford goes, oh, no, we've had so many coaches in so few years. And and he leaves and he hands it off to the guy he brought in, you know, Bryce Leibrand. And uh, and both of them end up winning state championships in the next four years. So um, what a win-win situation. And, and two great guys you yes. know, came out on top. So that's a very cool thing. That is a cool thing. Yeah, because um, I'm glad Devontae brought um, Coach Leibrand in. I mean – I thought Coach Lyvern was good, you know, when he ran the offense as the offense coordinator under um, Holloman. But, man, what a job he has done since he's become head coach. But that was neat to see, yeah, um, Devontae win a state title last year, and then Coach Lyvern and Buford win a state title this year. So that is pretty cool. Two outstanding coaches and both deserving of, of those state mm -hmm. titles. And what, you look at what Lyvern did back to that first year when – they lost the first four or five games or so, and then they, to, they, they lost Tyler Haley. They had to run the option with, with Daniel Ferris and led them to to a region title there. And, and 
felt like things just picked up from from that point in, in terms of Wyvern's ability to kind of meld a team to to fit its its players and and have them perform to the best of their abilities and put them in the right spots. And we saw it, of course, with Wyvern moving Casey Fields from wide receiver to running back this year and absolutely going out of his mind, 2,000-plus yards, 2,200 if you count the state championship game. Yeah. Just unbelievable numbers. Uh, Colton Ferry's yes. that, that three-way star. And then I think Wyvern really did a good job molding Ferris to to that, that role where – you know, he thrives in, in in the secondary, but, you know, he made use of his athletes and he put them out there at wide receiver and, and mm-hmm. just put them at running back. And, and you know, that that was the best possible move for, for, for Libran, just to, the, the way that run game was going and, and to have those three athletes in the in the, in the backfield alongside Samari Bonds, who kind of mm-hmm. took the night off a little bit in that finale. But, you know, I don't think yeah. this Beaver team gets there without the play of Bonds. He made a couple big throws throughout the postseason and uh, really ran the option mm-hmm. well. So, Buford doesn't get there without the play of Bonds, and he was a big factor to to that, that entire squad. So, you know, really a team effort, and then the offensive line was was stellar all the way around this year. So, you know, just a, a terrific team, and you know, it, it, the epitome of, of a, a, a strong football program, and and what you want to see at the high school level. Everyone does their job well. Uh, the coaching staff sets a great example. You have those leaders step up, and especially those twenty two seniors who were instrumental to this team. So, a sound football program. And, just a, a textbook definition of, of a group that just believed, never panicked in, in tough situations and, and played like champions. Yeah, yeah Jimmy, I agree with I, you. I they it. did. They... Go ahead. Go ahead. Now, I was going to say, yeah, they gelled well together. And, um, yeah, Colton Ferris, um, Appalachian State's getting a good athlete there. Um, but what an amazing job he's done. I had um, people from Dylan and – all that comment and how good, you know, Ferris and um, Casey Fields is and even Samari Bonds, you know, he didn't do a whole lot these last two games, like you said, Wes, but um, yeah, I mean, he's a, they wouldn't be here without him, you know, in the state title games, but he's done an amazing job in his sophomore year. Yeah. And, and the threat of him doing it was, was enough yeah. in the, you know, at the end of the season, um, that was enough to keep him honest because they knew he could do it. And it was in the back of their mind. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and they didn't have to, they didn't have to use it. They, the season is yeah. a, a tapestry and you're, you're, you're trying out everything you got and testing it out and, and, uh, you know, developing it so that everything's ready in your, in your toolbox for whatever you need when you, when you need it. So they had it all yeah. in there. And, um, you know, you, you talk about these, these kids and, and like Wes said, we talked with coach Labron a little bit later about, uh, you know, about some of the characters on this team, but um, I was talking with John Hop tonight over at Hillman Christian Academy, uh, one mm-hmm. of the guys who Bryce Labron shouted out as one of the guys who kind of took him under his wing and, and answered all his questions and helped him along his way as a first time head coach. And, um, you know, Hop mm-hmm. and I were talking about this team and, and, you know, we talked about how, how mean they are, how tough they are. And he said, well, on the football field. And I said, yeah, you're absolutely right. This is like the most, um, you know, for the most part, the, the most mild mannered, you know, po- most polite kids, um, the sideline is, is totally under control. Um, nobody's wilding out over there, you know, um, and, and like Hart Cushman, for example, is the mm-hmm. nicest, most kind soul you'll ever meet. But man, when he gets on the football field, he is a mean son of a gun. And, and, uh, you know, that's, <laughs> that's fun to see the way those kids can flip yeah. that switch and, and go be competitors. Yeah, I agree. And, um, yeah, that's, um, great. You talked about other coaches like John Hawk. Um, I saw on Twitter where BJ Payne Hilton heads head yep. coach and yeah, John Hawk, um, how they congratulated coach Libran and talked about how good, a, um, a coach Libran is and, um, how good this Buford football team is. So it's cool to see coaches all over the state and loco, you know, talking about, um, this Buford team, but uh, I think that's great they do that. Jimmy, you know, just, just give us your final reflections on, on this year. And, you know, I mean, this was something that you've been waiting for for, for decades, the fan. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be some kind of <laughs> special feeling. To, I mean, did you just, just take me back to your thoughts at the beginning of the year? Did you think this team had that talent to, to go all the way and win this state title? And, you know, I mean, just, just how awesome was it? And, and just reflect on, on some of these big moments along the way the, to that led these Eagles to the ultimate goal. 
Yeah, after that um, loss last year in a state title game to um, South Point, um, I said, you know, Buford had a lot of seniors coming back, and um, I expected them to make a good run. I didn't know if they would make it back to the state title game, but I figured they had a good enough team to go back to it. Um, but, yeah, it um, was a fun year this year. I mean, after losing the – Fort Dorchester 21 to 6, you know, to open the season. Um, Buford played hard against, you know, a top uh, five, uh, five A team. And I said, yeah. this team's going to be good. Um, so um, it was nice to see Samari Bonds grow up as the quarterback uh, and get better and better. And this whole Buford team, you know, after that loss to Fort Dorchester, winning 13 straight games and then winning a state title. I mean, they just look good this year. This was a, you know, fun season. And um, it was nice to finally see a state title. You know, like I said, I'm 50. And I've been waiting uh, my whole life for this because my dad had me at my first game, um, you know, when I was only a few months old. And then I got to play for Buford. And then, uh, you know, I go to every game. And it was nice to finally see them win a state title. JJ is a Cubs fan when they won it. All, uh, once again, in, in, or the, for the first time in, 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 for, that you saw in 2016. I mean, it's got to be a special mm -hmm. feeling there. And, uh, you know, kind of a similar situation. You know, they, they were knocking on the door the year before and just all, all put together at the mm -hmm. right time in that 2016 run. So, you know how special it is to, to be a fan in that situation. Yeah. It's a moment you enjoy and a moment you savor. Shoot, I remember right. my high school winning just... wrestling state championships when I was a kid, <laughs> and and it feeling like I'd waited forever, and I was only about ten or eleven years old. So uh, I can't imagine what Jimmy's feeling right now. Yeah, yeah, it's a great feeling, and um, it was cool to see you know fans um, just from me being on Loco Sports coming up to me and congratulating me and said I'm happy for you, you know, to f for you to finally see Buford win a state title in football, but yeah, it was a great feeling, and I appreciate everything y'all do. And um, but yeah, it was a cool feeling having people come up to me and giving me hugs and high fives, and you know, taking pictures with me. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it was amazing feeling. And then seeing uh, Coach Libran and all the coaches and players on the field holding up that championship um, plaque, man, it it's the greatest feeling in the world. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna. Love this. I'll be celebrating for a long time. And hopefully, be, um, if God, you know, hopefully they'll make another one, um, you know, before I leave this earth. So I hope to see another one, but I'm going to enjoy this one as long as I can. You head to the Christmas parade on Sunday? You're just going to be there. Yeah, oh, yeah, I saw that. I'm going to try to make tree. it. I hope. Um, yeah, I saw they're going to be in it and um, lead, leading the parade and I think that's a good thing that um, Buford's mayor, um, Stephen Murray, um, is having the team there. Um, yeah, I think they deserve it. So that's that's going to be cool to see. That's very good. I saw Mayor Murray on the sidelines last night cheering them on. So uh, very cool. That's, yeah. that's the thing you got to love about small town high school sports, man. There's nothing <laughs> quite like it. Uh, the mayor's on the I sidelines agree. at the state championship and he's got you leading off the parade. So, well, I'm, I'm so glad that people recognized you, you know, from, from your, uh, your stints on here and your previews. Uh, it's been <laughs> awesome to have you helping us out. Cause like I've said all season long, nobody knows that team better than you. And I mean, aside from the coaching staff, there ain't nobody who knows that team better than you in and out so we've really enjoyed having you help us cover them I feel like we knew everything that was going on with this team thanks to your reports and and you kept us posted when we couldn't be there so that was awesome and uh, so happy for you to get to celebrate this one and and drift off to sleep you know every night thinking about the, those guys <laughs> holding up that plaque on the field so uh, that's amazing yeah. stuff I do have to ask you though how many games is this now uh, 612 I just 612 yeah, the games how yeah, 612 them, games. How many of them did the Eagles not throw a single pass? Not that many. Even when I played for Buford, <laughs> you, you know, we, you know Buford's always been a yeah, Buford's always been a running team, but they've completed at least, you know, a couple passes in the game. But yeah, you don't see that that often. Um, but it's cool to see them, you know, um do that well and win a state title, rushing for over 400 yards. And not a single pass.
Not yeah, a single amazing. pass attempted in the last game, not a single pass completed in the yeah. last two, and they're the state champions. It's and it's 2022. Uh, welcome to the <laughs> welcome to the past, folks. Uh, they yeah. might have set back football a few, few years last year, but flags fly forever. So uh, so so who were who cares? Um, well, good stuff, yes. Jimmy. We appreciate you, man. Bask in the glow. Oh, you welcome. And, I appreciate uh, y'all. Man, you, you're having a good run. You had the chickens beat Clemson, and then you got and then yes. you got Buford State Championship. So yeah. like, I don't know what you're living right. Yeah. If you get some lo, some lotto numbers, you know, hook us up. We, we got to go play the same ones, man, because you're you're living right yeah. right now. Yeah, I'll hook you up if I win the lottery. I'll hook y'all up. I, I know you will, brother. You know, we appreciate nice. you, man. Uh, we appreciate you. I appreciate you. I know you do, man. And go Eagle. Uh, congratulations. Enjoy your weekend. Uh, yeah, and as you always say, send us off with a, a Go Eagles and Go Loco. Yeah, Go Eagles and Go Loco. We'll be right back with more here on Loco Pigskin Live. This podcast is made possible by our sustaining sponsors. Our original sponsor, Mickelson Law Firm, the official real estate attorneys of locosports.com. Go see Ryan and Tiffany and the Mickle Squad for all your legal needs and support the local businesses that support Loco. Local Pie, official pizza sponsor of Loco Sports. They sling the best pies in Bluffton and on Hilton Head, but don't sleep on the mac and cheese. Hospice Care of the Low Country, the official hospice provider of Loco Sports. For more than 30 years, the committed, compassionate staff at Hospice Care of the Low Country has provided a community based Nonprofit solution to ensure everyone finds comfort, honor, and dignity at the end of life. Star Home Services, official residential cleaning service of Loco Sports. Sometimes you just don't want to clean. Call on Carla and her amazing team to do the dirty work at a great price and tell them Loco sent you. 843 Sport, the official training center of Loco Sports. No matter your game, 843 Sport is the place to take it to the next level. They're bringing all the area's top trainers and some of the best elite travel teams from various sports under one roof at 843 Sport. DDS Web Design, the official SEO experts of Loco Sports. If you have a business and you want to get found, look no further than DDS. They can build an attractive and effective website loaded with all the cutting edge SEO tools you need to show up where people are looking on Google. Dave and Denise will get it done. Hey, Loco Sports fans, all of our grassroots local sports content is brought to you by sponsors like Homegrown Home Inspections in Bluffton. The next time you buy or sell a home, you have to make sure you have the protection of a great home inspector who has your interests in mind. Jan Lucas and his team at Homegrown Home Inspections do just that. They look out for the consumer. They look out for the client. So next time you buy or sell, make sure you have someone like Jan Lucas on your side at Homegrown Home Inspections, the official home inspectors of Loco Sports. Hey Loco Sports fans, our great grassroots local sports content is brought to you by sponsors like Jay's Barbershop in Ridgeland. The next time you're looking for a cut or a trim, you gotta go to Jay's. It's the talk of the town and the place to be. You'll get a cut, a shave, a trim, whatever you need, and great conversation with great people at Jay's Barbershop. Jay has been a friend of Loco for a long time, and we're happy to have him on board as a sponsor. Thanks so much, Jay's Barbershop. Go check them out in Ridgeland. Proud sponsors of LocoSports.com. All right, folks, we are joined by the man of the hour, uh, Mr. Bryce Libran, the, the state champion coach of the Buford Eagles, and uh, that has to feel pretty special to hear. Uh, has it started to settle in yet, what, what happened last night? Uh, you know, take, taking home a state championship after getting so close a year ago and, and being down early in this game once again and being able to fight back and get the win. Uh, ha have you been able to process a little bit yet that, that you guys are state champs? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a cool thing and um, there's a lot going on. So I feel like the last, you know, uh, you know, since the game ended, it's just been me answering uh text messages and phone calls and uh emails and uh social media and uh interviews and all that stuff so um you know we'll we'll soak it in a little bit uh a little bit but uh yeah it's been it's been really cool um you know but you know win or lose it doesn't change your life right you know it's just uh you, you want a football game and it was a big football game but um you know it's still just football so 
uh, pretty pretty cool. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been pretty busy since the end of the game last night. Coach, congratulations once again. I want to know what you said to your guys after they pulled off the state championship win on, on Thursday night and, and your, your overall thoughts and what you told them after they, they finished it off. Uh, we just, you know, told them we were proud of them, you know, and uh, just how much we loved them and, you know, how much we appreciate them being them. You know, it's a great group and they're fun to coach. And so, you know, that's kind of what we told them. And, you know, also told them, you know, don't let it be the biggest moment of your life, you know. Um, it's a great thing. Um, it's something that, you know, they'll they'll remember forever, but, you know, there's things that are far bigger. Um, and so, you know, I don't I don't want it to be a thing that in 30 years, that's that's the, the, the highlight for them. You know, I want it to be um, a great thing, but uh, would prefer for them to, you know, be great husbands and fathers and, you know, leaders in the community and, um, you know, have a good faith life and those things. So uh, that's kind of what we told them after the game. Uh, got a few tears shed, I would imagine. Uh, a little bit, a little bit. It was, uh, I, I was probably, I was too cold last night to, to shed any tears. So, um, you yeah, know, it wasn't too bad. Coach, um, you know, after getting down 14 to zero, most teams would have, you know, probably mix in a little bit of pass game, but you know, you, you, you didn't attempt to pass all night and it, it, it worked out fine with you. Um, was, was that something you saw or you just, you know, said, keep the ball on the ground and trust it? Um, not only did we not attempt one, we didn't even think about it. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I talked to Logan Powell after the game. He's our offensive coordinator. And I said, did you think about passing the ball at all? And he goes, no, did you? I said, no, it never even crossed my mind. So, um, no, nah, I mean, it was, you know, the first series, uh, we kind of turned some guys loose and, you know, Logan went over and looked at the tape and he was like, he's, he said, we're, we're fine. We're just, we, we missed people. Um, so we go out the second drive and, you know, we, we had to fake the punt, but we go down and score. And then we came out the third drive and, you know, we, we saw they, they had subbed a lot of people in and, um, you know, saw some people that we weren't necessarily real familiar with from watching film. And um, I think both of us kind of thought, okay, the, the physicality is something that maybe they're not used to um, or they just don't like. Um, and so we just said, all right, let's 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 pound the ball at him and, and see what happens. And so, um, you know, we were able to go get that third uh, third drive in, and then, you know, Casey returns the kick, and then you know we don't touch the ball again in the in the second quarter. Um, and so we we kind of felt good going into half that okay, you know, we just need to keep running right at them. And when we kind of came out in the third quarter and did the same thing, um, I think we knew that that was kind of you know where we needed to stay. So. Yeah, there wasn't wasn't a whole lot of discussion about about passes. Um, you know, one of my one of my brother's friends texted me today, and he was talking. He said, "I got one question." He said, "What's on that big play sheet?" And I said, "That's where we keep all the stuff we're not going to run." Um, so we we ran like three plays all night last night. So uh, it was a it was an easy game plan, uh, easy, easy play caller situation. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Ian Garen was joking that you were the, the driver's ed teacher last night, 10 and two. Yeah. Uh, I, was, not I just, was really, I was really mad. I didn't think about that. That was, that was a phenomenal tweet. Uh, yeah, it was the 10 and two <laughs> offense. Cause you got number 10 and number two, and that's right. pretty much where you ran it all night was at right. 10 and two. So yeah. uh, uh, all night long, but uh, you know, once again, that offensive line um, and, and a lot of those guys going both ways last night mm -hmm. too. Um, and, and still, as you said, that the physicality became a little bit too much for Powdersville. I mean, what can you say about those fellas and, and the work they've done all year and just the work that went into getting to where they are? Yeah, they've been unbelievable. And, and uh, you know, those guys don't get a whole lot of credit playing off. I played offensive line. You know, nobody, nobody talks about you. Um, you know, but we – like – you know, we made the decision in the offseason to move Hart Cushman from from tackle to center. Um, and we did that because we felt like we needed a guy that could control a nose, you know. And if we felt like we, we could control a nose, then, you know, we had two, you know, guys that could probably play tackle pretty good. Um, and then we had to find two guards, you know. Um, and so, uh, you know, Ad Adrian Lamb last night uh, at left tackle was just an absolute beast. Um, yeah. Him and Hart, uh, those, they were just – I mean, you just looked up and, and Powdersville guys were like 15 yards down the field. Uh, it was, it was <laughs> wild, um, you know, but 
Um, you know, and Aaron Lamb over on the other side at tackle did a great job. And then we had to find two other guards. And so, um, you know, Justin Weinberg's a kid that's been in our program for four years and, and um, you know, kind of came along and did a great job for us this year and really kind of settled in. And, you know, he was playing last night. He was hurting. Uh, kind of got rolled up on a little bit on one of the plays and just kept playing. And um, and then and then Kenshawn Speaks is a freshman, you know, starting in a state championship game and uh, at right guard. He did a great job. And uh, you combo those five with Michael Dennison. And not, Michael, we weren't sure was going to play this week. Um, he was uh, he was banged up. Uh, his ankle was was hurt, um, you know, and he he did a good job of kind of rehabbing and our. Uh, trainer Jonathan Chang really did some great stuff with him. And um, I guess Wednesday we kind of had a breakthrough and he kind of felt a lot better. And um, and then Thursday he was able to play. Uh, but, you know, he he had some pain, you know, whether he'd say it or not, he had some pain there. So, you know, those guys up front did a great job. And, um, you know, that's, that's the only way that you're going to win that football game like that is if the offensive line's doing a really great job. So, so really proud of them. And uh, I think someone else who really stood out as the year went on, and especially in the postseason, uh, Will Cotty at, at linebacker was tremendous. Uh, just tell me about him and, and what he's brought to to help the physicality and, and effectiveness of your defense. Yeah, he's uh, he's a downhill guy now. He he likes going and, and striking people, um, <laughs> and and he does a good job. And you know, Will Will's a tenth grader, you know, and uh, he takes the weight room serious and. Um, works hard and, uh, you know, he's a, he's a guy that's got a great, great upside to him. Um, you know, and he, he, when we need him to make plays, he goes and makes plays. Uh, he's been, he's been really, really good for us. Um, you know, and, uh, you're, you're not going to stop that back that we played last night. That kid's just too good. Um, he's as good as I've coached against probably. He's very good. Um, and so, um, you know, you just have to get a stop here or there. And that's kind of what we said um, in the second half was, hey, just let's just go get one stop. If you just yeah. get one stop, we can end it. Um, you know, and obviously we were able to do that. And, and Will's a big part of that. So he's been he's been really, really good for us this year. Yeah. Um, you know, Coach, in the, in the last season, you lose a guy like Tyler Haley. who can re He's really a gunslinger. He can, you know, throw the ball far and really hurt you on the ground. And um, you're coming into the season with, you know, 10th grader, no varsity experience, Samari Bonds. But, you know, and really, you know, this year in the playoffs when it mattered, he didn't have to pass the ball because Colton and Casey really carried it. Next year, are you really looking for him to evolve as a passer and really just form into that gunslinger type? <laughs> Man. I, I hadn't thought about it next year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Ask me that question in like four months. I, no, I don't know. No, nah. uh, nah, listen, Samari's great. Uh, he's yeah. Um, he's going to be just fine. Uh, listen, teams are different. Like every oh, team yeah. is different. And mm -hmm. this team was built to run the football. Um, yeah. You know, we, we could have tried to sling it around and throw it a bunch and all that. Um, but – that's not how this team's built. Like when you've got two and 10 um, and you can run like that, then, I mean, if I would have gone out there and thrown 15 passes like that, somebody should have taken my coach's pass because um, <laughs> there's just no reason to. Um, and, and the coolest thing about Samari is that Samari did not care. Uh, Samari just wanted to win the football game. Um, you know, which a lot of kids ain't like that nowadays. Like they no, won't. No, they they're won't not. Yeah. Um, uh, but he got his shine through winning a ring. Um, so, you know, and, and the thing that, that you, you know, Samari probably doesn't get enough credit for is, you know, in a game against Dylan, you know, he rushes for 90 yards and he does that mm -hmm. making reads on the read run game. Um, so, you know, it's kind of like, well, you know, he ran some, but, you know, well, no, that's that he still has to make the correct read and then he still right. has to make plays. And so he did right. that, um, you know, in, in a place, you know, nobody's won in 11 years in the playoffs and you know and and he did that against you know Gilbert who is is well a coach football team as there is in South Carolina and he did that against Crestwood when we're down 18 um so you know yeah I, I mean the passing stats probably aren't there from from the past few weeks but um he was doing what we were asking him to do um 
and and uh, he's a big reason why you know we woke up today state champions. Absolutely, and and the threat was there. Um, and, and they had to be in the back of their minds too, because they were really packing the box and, and they had to know that it was there. So, um, cause he can throw the deep ball now. So uh, yeah, I, I thought he did a tremendous job. Um, and, and especially with the attitude, I mean, he was as hype as anybody mm-hmm. after the game yep. and, uh, you're right. There are not a lot of kids who, who would be like that. So, uh, that was really impressive. Um, <laughs> And you're not ready to talk about next year yet? I no. Mean, no. Started, no. <laughs> didn't start filling out the depth chart or no, anything? No. Um, h- how long do you kind of bask in the glow for this? I don't know. Uh, we'll figure it out as we go. Uh, we, uh, we'll, we'll, you know, we always give them off till January, just kind of, you know, let them get their legs back under them a little bit and um, and then get back into to our weightlifting program, which, you know, has really kind of been – uh, one of the transformational things in this program. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll give them a little bit of time off and then we'll, we'll get back to it and, you know, kind of assess what we've got and got coming back and, you know, where the pieces need to move around to. But, um, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, we'll, we'll kind of let them, let them kind of bask in the glory of being state champions for a little bit. On the subject of transformation real quick, when I first met Jack Sumner a couple of years ago, he was a, a big old teddy bear, soft, you know. I mean, he was he was a, a golfer and looked like a golfer. And last night, he looked like a, a elite edge rusher. I mean, yeah, the, man. the transformation that has happened there has been phenomenal. I know it's not an isolated case, but um, I mean that that kid, you can really see it in him. The 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 work and the the transformation that's happened, and I'm sure there are a bunch of them on your team that fit that mold. Yeah, he's uh he's worked really hard and he's a great kid. Um and yeah, that's that's probably where a lot of that uh y- you know that kind of uh you know nice guy thing comes from from you, you know, when you say like oh yeah. a couple of years he's just, he was he was he's, yeah. he is the nicest kid on the planet. Um Exactly. And uh but but buddy, he is a football player. Um and he gets after it. He is 100 miles an hour all the time. Yeah. Um and you know, he's just, he's done a great job and he's, you know, he's a program guy. Like, you know, he's just gotten a little bit better every year to the point where now he's a really, really good football player. And that's, um, that's the cool thing to, to see. And, um, you know, and he's, he's earned it, man. And, um, you know, he does things the right way, never complains, you know, he was a captain for us this year. Um, so yeah, just, just a, a great kid from a great family and, um, you know, a guy that, that's kind of the model of what we want kids in our program to be. I think you can say, say the same thing for a bunch of other guys on this defense, the way they fight hard on every play and, and buy in and do their job at, at their position. So, I mean, all credit to what, what you've been doing and, and, and just, you know, I think it really, Things started with in that Crestwood game. I mean, down 18 in, in the second half, there was no panic with any of these guys. And, you know, just describe how, how you all just, just found a way to to dig in and, and fight your way back and how those group of seniors really took charge to push just this team over the top and then carry that with them throughout the rest of the postseason to end up on top of state champs. Yeah, I mean, I think coming back from that 18-point deficit kind of gave them a little bit of a resolve you know, when it comes to playing in those games where you get down and, um, you know, and then we're down against Gilbert and we're down against Dylan. And so, you know, I mean, we went in at half and it was like, okay, you know, this is kind of uh, par for the course for us, right? We got to make things hard on ourselves. Um, uh, but, you know, just a um, a cool thing, you know, and, and those, that's that's how those kids are kind of built. That's That's kind of the – um, the way we've built this program is that they're not going to freak out, you know, and that, that goes a lot to the senior leadership that we have. And, um, you know, so it was cool. And, um, you know, we were talking as coaches after the, the Dylan game about how, um, it's fun to coach in games like that. You know, the, the, the Dylan games, the Gilbert games, the, the Crestwood games where you, you've got to coach and, and and it's a chess match and you're figuring out what they're doing and you're counter punching and um and that's really fun to 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 do that um now i told him yesterday i said I, I wouldn't mind a bit if we didn't have to do that tonight but we did um 
you know, especially defensively, they, they've got some great players. So we had to kind of find some things that work, but, um, you know, Rob Garald, you know, that defensive staff did a great job with it. So, um, yeah, I just, um, uh, it's, it's been, it's been fun, but they, you know, they just don't, they don't panic and they, um, they've been under the gun. And so when they get under the gun, it's just kind of like, yeah, it's kind of what we do. And now we're going to come back. And so, um, that's a really cool thing. Um, coach, there's a lot of great memories and a lot of great moments throughout this season. Obviously last night was probably one of the best feelings ever, but what was your favorite part of this, this team in general, these guys? Just being at practice with them. I, like there's just so many like funny personalities on the team um, that it's sometimes borderline hard to be the head coach because <laughs> like there's times where you need to tell them like, Hey guys, uh, like, quit joking around so much, but you're also over there like laughing at them. Cause you're like, that's legitimately funny. Um, so sometimes you have to kind of make yourself be the bad guy. Cause you're, you're like, okay, we, we got to get back to like what we're doing. But um, there is just a bunch of jokesters. And, and uh, I, I just, uh, I love just being around them. That was a cool thing to me. It was just, we got the maximum amount of time we could with those kids, which is um, the cool thing when you, when you got a team like this, that's just fun to be around. Um, so I was, I was just happy that we got to spend a bunch of time with them. All right. Who were the, who were the big jokesters? I know Bauer Sox definitely oh, yeah. was not, yeah, not yeah, Ferris. Harder. Ferris is, is dope. He's, he's, he's sneaky. He's sneaky, goofy. Um, Ferris is, um, yeah. I mean, uh, Samari is, is, yeah, yeah. He's uh, a, is a jokester to the max. Um, <laughs> you know, Keon Rivers is just hilarious. Um, Keon became our de facto, like, get everybody out of the locker room guy. So we would – Keon would be out, and we would say, hey, Keon, go get everybody out, you know, and he would he would go in there and act like he was a coach, you know, and start yelling at people. Hey, you know, you're you're rolling if you're not out in 30 seconds, you know, and he's counting. And um, so, yeah, there's a bunch on this team and um, just, just made it a lot of fun uh, to coach and uh, kind of kept it light. Um, and that was kind of one of the things I told our coaches, like, halfway through the year, like, um, like on game day, I, I would probably prefer for them to be like a little more locked in, uh, but that's not who these kids are. Um, you kind of just had to let them kind of be loose because that was and, – and there were a few games where I was livid before games, just like we're so unfocused and then we go out and it's just like touchdown, stop, touchdown, stop, touchdown, stop. And, you know, it's like, well, I don't know. I guess that's just who they are. So – um, we kind of let this team be a little more loose than we did other teams we've had in the past just because we knew they could handle it. So, um, yeah, it was it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Well, obviously this state championship means so much to not just you guys, but this entire Beaufort High and Low Country community. And it's been a very long time since Beaufort County has, has had a South Carolina High School football title. And, and you saw all the support coming from B.J. Payne, from, from Beaufort Academy, from Bluffton, everybody – going on, on, on Buford's side here and repping the loco. How, how proud does that make you as a head coach? And, and just tell me about the, how excited you are for, for the community to celebrate this title. Yeah, it's, it's cool. I think it, uh, I think it says a lot about the kind of people that we, that are around here, um, you know, and just trying to help each other out. I, it's kind of weird that, that sometimes in coaching, you kind of get this like adversarial, uh, relationship where like you, people act like you got to hate each other and all this stuff. And I, I just don't like, I don't subscribe to that. That's just not who I am. Um, you know, so you, you listen, when we play Hilton head, I want to beat the brakes off of, off of BJ Payne's team and BJ wants to beat the brakes off of us. And we both know that. Um, but when the game ends, you know, I know that, that we're going to be great friends and, uh, that if I got a question or I need help that I'll call him and he'll do that. And so, um, you know, and there's a lot of, you know, coach hop was like that. Uh, he was always phenomenal to me. And so, um, I think there's just a lot of really good people around here that are coaches. And, um, you know, I think that's, you know, one of those things that, uh, kind of as I've settled into being a head coach, you know, uh, trying to be that for other people, um, you know, when they come in, just trying to help out a little bit. Uh, so it was, it was really cool. It's been, it's been cool. And it's been awesome to see. I mean, there's people all over the state of South Carolina tweeting out about this team and, and you look at it and you're like, good grief. You know, this is, uh, 
people people don't talk about Buford football uh, like like that here. Um, so uh, it's been neat to see uh, kind of that transformation and uh, the respect that this program's kind of kind of garnered through the years, and um, you know, and obviously kind of get to the mountaintop last night, and that changes things. Yeah, coach. If I'm not mistaken, um, Colton, Casey, and those those sen- that senior group was your first freshman class. Right. How did, what does that mean to you, and what does that mean for them, for you to build these guys up and see them come out on top in their final game as a Buford Eagle? Uh, it, it means that I was really lucky as a first-year head coach to get a class <laughs> like that. That's what it means. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, nah, I mean they're they're great. Um, they they bought into what we were selling. Um, and you know, we got a little bit better every year, and you know, we were four and six, and then you know we got COVID year, and we're five and two, and then we go twelve and three, and go to a state championship, and then you go thirteen and one, and you win one, and um, you know, I think that's probably the coolest thing to me as a head coach is that you know you can see the progression of the program, um, and yeah. so you see that it's you, you know you're taking steps, you know, to get to where you're going, and. Um, you know, it's kind of, I was thinking about that a little bit yesterday is that, you know, this is the next step is to win it. So um, it was cool to be able to go out and do that. Where do you go from here, right? I mean, uh, you, you go try to win another one, but uh, one reason you might not want to start thinking about next year yet is those 22 seniors and, and what they meant to your team and, and all but seven of your offensive yards from last night uh, walking out the door. So um, tell us a little bit about the, I mean, you've talked about some of the young kids who played key roles this year, but uh, middle school program has, has been really strong. All the middle school programs over in, in Buford have been solid. Um, so what's what's coming down the pipeline for, for Buford? Yeah, we got some good kids. We really do. And we got some, some good young ones that we feel good about. And, you know, we're developing them in the weight room and still kind of got to, got to change their body types a little bit, but, you know, we feel like there's some, there's some good, good, you know, nucleus of kids in that young class. And, um, you know, we'll be getting a, another group here from the middle schools that we feel like is going to be good. So, um, you know, we, we just got to, uh, get them here and then evaluate what we got and then uh, turn them into Buford Eagles, you know, and, and uh, kind of get them acclimated to the way we do things. And, you know, we feel strongly about, you know, that change and what, what we can do with them in a, in a year or two um, to kind of get them on board doing things our way. And, um, you know, and obviously that's worked. And speaking of someone that you helped grow throughout these last four years, and I mean, blossoming big time in his senior year, Casey Fields. I mean, just an unbelievable young man who has is, is, is absolutely put in the, the work over, over these last few seasons. And uh, when you got his chance at running back, he shined. Just, you know, just describe of, of what he has meant to you. And, and you had some kind words for him after the game. And, and just tell him about your relationship with him over the years and just how proud you are of all that he's done. Yeah, you know, you're, you're proud of all of them, you know, and I'm proud of Casey. He's, uh, you know, it hadn't always been easy. And, I mean, Kate, Casey's, you know, he's an unbelievable football player. And and uh, it's kind of funny to see the reactions of people last night, like, oh, my gosh, look at this guy. And it was like, yes, yes, look at this guy. This is what we've been talking about. Like, um, I, don't, I don't know any other way to do it, like, other than to just show up at colleges and start banging a drum, like, um, it just, just is beyond me, um, you know, and, and I think more people are going to start jumping on, but, uh, you know, you see it and you're like, man, this guy's like, he had 300 yards last night of total offense, you know, hundred <laughs> yards rushing again. Um, so at some point you gotta, I don't know, you, you gotta give him a shot. Um, but there's there's a lot that are missing out right now yeah i mean you and i were texting earlier and and i i was just incredulous that everybody who wasn't was on that sideline last night hadn't texted you yet today like i mean like you want to be the first one to him right all of you saw the same thing and know that he's he's doesn't have any offers what what are you waiting on um i don't know if there's a fear to be first or or what it is but um, it's wild, but I did see Savannah State came in today, and and hopefully that starts to you know, that starts to get off the hook, and and we're about more and more because there's no question in my mind, and and he's got BJ Payne's stamp of approval, and BJ Payne, if nothing else, has 
proven that he can identify, you know, Division One talent. Um, he, he's he's good at futures, as as we would say, and as that goes. Um, I, I, I'm like you. Like, do do we just need to organize the Casey Fields traveling roadshow and go around to to campuses and show him off around the state, or what? Right. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it's wild. Um, but. You know, somebody will figure it out, um, and he'll he'll make somebody look really smart for taking him. You know, and the, I mean, my thing is like that kid. Yeah, you know, I, I just at this point I don't really know what the knot could be. Like, I don't understand um, what what the holdup would be because he's he's got grades. He's a great kid, character wise. Um, you know, he's he's rushed for 2,200 yards or whatever it is. <laughs> in 11 um, games. <laughs> yeah, in 11 games. Like, um, he's just done everything. Like, you, you can't say, like, well, maybe it's a speed thing because he ran away from everybody a couple times last night. He's He's got yeah. a ton of, you know, 15-plus yards, which is an explosive run in pretty much any offense. And, um, and so – I just don't know what the knock would be like he, he, physically he's put together as good as anybody you're going to find. So, um, you know, it'll, it'll happen. We just gotta, we gotta get it. Um, we gotta, we gotta get somebody to, to pull the trigger on that. Coach, I just want to touch on something that I, I thought was, uh, quite funny and kind of quite ironic. I was, uh, I was doing some I, I just saw on YouTube it was like a preseason interview with the WHHI and you know you were talking about the players and you said Casey's an athlete he's going to do a lot for us and the interviewer asked Casey said Casey what is your favorite position and he looked at the camera and said running back mm -hmm. I just thought that was very ironic and how you know that that kid was amazing at running back I just can't yeah. say enough about him really yeah he's he's really good he's going uh He's going. He's made a high school coach look really good, and he's going to make a college co coach look really good. Uh, you know, at some point. Uh, Dylan, you also made a good catch last night on the the wardrobe change at halftime by Coach, uh, which he offered up to us <laughs> on his own last night. We had a busted zipper at halftime, so you, you had to switch into the backup pants that were. You got soaked with Gatorade, which of course you did. In right. the backup pants. So how was that bus ride home last night? Uh, I, there was another coach that had a pair of sweatpants that they weren't using, and they loaned Coach Canoza. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, zipper breaks and at halftime, and I'm like looking around, like, well, this is not good. If we were playing at Buford, I probably would have rolled the dice and just said, well, nobody's gonna see it. But uh, state championship, there's too many cameras there, so I, was, I said, oh, this is uh, not good. So. Uh, we we tried to uh, get the zipper fixed and it didn't. And then uh, I, I had uh, Coach Quinlan. Uh, I, I went and changed and uh, gave the khakis to Coach Quinlan. I said, "Hey man, uh, see if you get the zipper fixed." And uh, you know, he looked at me like I was crazy. Um, you know, and <laughs> couldn't get it fixed, so uh, I had to wear the the sweatpants out. And uh, I kind of grabbed him in the third quarter and I said, you know, what a, what a funny story this is going to be if we can win this thing. <laughs> you know? um, so yeah, just, uh, I don't know. One of those weird things that happens that, uh, you know, I don't, uh, probably two years ago, it probably would have really like ruffled me up, but uh, I just laughed. I just couldn't help but laugh. And the kids were in there looking at me like, what is going on, dude? So uh, maybe, maybe a little, a uh, little comedy at halftime helped. I don't know, but uh you know, make the adjustments how you got to. Uh, I didn't think I was going to have to make that adjustment, but we, we made it work. Coach, uh, I just wanted to talk on this point, but, you know, we were, we were hoping to see Anderson Jones play football for you guys this fall. Unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be with, with what happened this past summer. But, you know, I think the, the, the his mentality that, that he showed during basketball season last year, just his hustle, his never quit mentality, I really think a lot of these future players really adopted that and, and kind of, you know, with the whole Anderson Jones fan club stuff that we did early on in the season to raise awareness of and, and just promote his traits and mentality and, and the way that he always fought on and off the field, on and off the court. Uh, tell me about what that meant for, for you guys to to play like him and, and win a championship for him this year. Yeah, I mean, I think it was huge. You know, that's why we put those AJ stickers on the front of the helmet yeah. so they could see them. Um, you know, I wanted the, the kids to, to be able to look at each other and see that. So, 
Um, yeah, it's just about, um, it's just about a mentality and it's just about, you know, fighting, you know, which is what Anderson did obviously. And, um, and so you, uh, you hope that your team can kind of emulate that some in a game situation. And, and obviously this team did that. And, um, you know, uh, Anderson's been, uh, been doing good. And so, um, you know, it's always, it's always cool to see him, you know, come down and, uh, kind of kick it with us in the gym some and, and talk. And so, uh, he's, he's doing well, but yeah, I mean, I think, I think that's a, uh, that's a mentality thing that, that these kids kind of take from him for sure. Yeah. We're, we're talking to him about getting him involved with loco too. So we're going to, we're going to get him involved in some way or another, uh, awesome. helping us do what we do. Cause he knows the games and, and, uh, oh, yeah. you know, knows the players and, uh, he'll be terrific at it once we get him in the mix. Uh, uh, well, hey, man, it, it was a tremendous pleasure to cover this team this year. I mean, it has been since, you know, since you began your tenure there. Uh, a pleasure to cover your program. You guys do it the right way. We appreciate you. Um, we appreciate you playing, you know, playing the game with us, too, and, and helping us out. And uh, just really proud of you guys. I mean, it was a tremendous team effort. Uh, you know, it starts with you, starts at the top. But that coaching staff that you've built there is phenomenal. Uh, the community support was outrageous i mean it, it was really awesome last night and um and, and the young man that, that you guys have have coached up over there are a, a class act and and something that the entire low country can be proud of so thanks for everything you do man and enjoy this uh this downtime and uh relax a little bit and then get back to work all right we'll do thanks guys appreciate y'all all right we'll be right back with more here on loco pigskin live Buford Eagles fans, be sure to grab your piece of the history this week with the Island News special section celebrating your state champions, the 2022 Buford Eagles football team. The four-page special section in this week's Island News and this recap show were made possible by sponsorships from Stars and Stripes Contracting, providing licensed residential building and professional contracting services. Stars and Stripes congratulates the Beaufort High football team on its historic state championship season. If you're looking to build a new home or renovate or remodel yours, be sure to call Stars and Stripes Contracting, LLC. Renovate, build, remodel. Go Eagles and go Loco. Moe's Southwest Grill in Beaufort and Bluffton. Moe's congratulates the state champion Beaufort High Eagles football team and says, Welcome to Moe's anytime. Go Eagles and go Loco. South Carolina Cancer Specialist and Dr. Shaheen, always standing with our Buford Eagles. Dr. Shaheen and the South Carolina Cancer Specialists are proud of you for being true champions. Go Eagles, go Loco. Plums, Hearth Wood Fired Pizza, and Saltus River Grill, your favorite places to grab a bite on the riverfront. They're Eagle proud. Eat local and celebrate our state champs. Low Country Anesthesia congratulates the BHS Eagles on a memorable championship season with a special congratulations to number 23, McLeod Rochelle. Low Country Anesthesia says, Go Eagles and Go Loco. Ace Hardware, your local Ace Hardware is proud of you, Eagles. Come on in in Port Royal at 1347 Rebo Road for all your hardware needs. Meredith Signature Home says congratulations to the Buford Eagles on their state championship win. The folks at Meritus are so proud of the coaches and team. Come visit them at 202 Carteret Street in the city of Buford. The city of Buford is proud of its Eagles and says congratulations to the 2022 Buford High School football team for making history. Additional support provided by Cannon Specialty Services, Bluffton Pest Control, Next Move, The Fit Club in Belfair Town Village, and our Patreon members. Join today for $1 or more per month at patreon.com slash locosports to get early or exclusive access to our local sports content and exclusive loco swag. Uh, guys, I, I mean, like we have said all season long and, and uh, you know, especially uh, in the past 24 hours, uh, so happy for Jimmy Searson. I mean, just couldn't be happier for that guy. Um, what a... a, a just kind soul and and tremendous guy, um, genuine and and uh, heartfelt love for those Buford Eagles and and every 
guy who's ever strapped on the, the helmet for the, for the green and white, man. He just he lives and dies by them. Uh, there's one of those guys in just about every town and, and, uh, but not, not all of them are as special as Jimmy. It's, it's a really cool thing. So it's been so cool to have him as part of our coverage as well. And, and really lend that insight and, uh, and personal touch, you know, I mean, there, nobody knows a team like their fans, you know, they, they, they just pay attention to every little detail and Jimmy's always on top of it. Uh, really fortunate to have met him when I first started this thing up and, and he was, you know, of course on there commenting on everything and go Eagles, go Eagles. And I reached out and said, Hey man, I appreciate the support. I want to send you a hat and a shirt and stuff. And uh, we hit it off and, and have become great friends and I uh, really appreciate his support along the way and, and his help covering this team. But um, you know, guys, uh, I want to get kind of your final thoughts, Dylan. I, we talked at times during the season, especially during this postseason, about how kind of eye-opening it was for you to to watch this Buford team having played skis of football for the past four years um, and see just the size and strength and speed of, of what look like average size players from, you know, from the stands or on film. And then you get down on the field and you're like, gosh, dang, Casey Fields is a man. Colton mm -hmm. Ferris is a man. Um, seeing them play throughout these playoffs, how impressed are you with – uh, just the the overall athleticism, speed, strength, all those things, and and, the, and as well as the knowledge of the game. I mean, you're a film film junkie, and and you pay attention to that stuff, and and their attention to detail, uh, just all those things. I mean, you, you've seen a lot of football. How good was this football team uh, as far as where they stack up with the ones you've seen? Man, from the, um, I mean, from the athlete standpoint, you know, I I played against singular athletes. You know, you know, a team will mm -hmm. have a, a D one guy. I've never seen so many compiled into one team, even not the D1 guys on Beaver's team. You know, yeah. Zach Talbert is not a D1 football player, but, I mean, he, he would be really good in some of the skis of schools around here, like yeah. almost the best player. Um, and just – He I've is a D1 really... baseball player, though. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I've never seen, like, true domination to the finest. Um you know, when you when you don't or even attempt to pass, that's domination. And it doesn't matter what kind of team you are. Just triple option teams pass the ball. Yeah. And Buford's not a triple option team. So the domination standpoint, the size differential, and it really just the speed. Like Colton and Casey have this explosiveness. You know, they're good runners, but the, the, the get-go is really fast. And that's really the difference, Um, just the speed and the size and just – domination on both sides of the line and i think yeah. some of that's a result of them seeing last year that they had to be faster and they really focused on that in the off season um you know making sure that they were more explosive because they saw the way south point flew to the ball and man there's just no margin you know it, it closed up so fast and um and, and and powdersville was a little bit quicker off the ball at the start of the game last night but i think you saw buford really lock in um, especially after that fake punt, that, that kind of jump started things. Uh, they got a little momentum, a little life and, uh, and they just started rolling from there. But, uh, Wes, you, you two, you know, you and I have covered some, some phenomenal teams these last few years, some, some great state championship games. Um, you know, for me, th this is right up there in the highlights of, of the games I've covered, just the whole package of, of the team and its personality, uh, you know, the, the fan base and its fervor, uh, the setting, you know, Powdersville was, was a great foil, um, came out and, and played a great game and it was a great fight and the crowd was hype. And, and you know, I mean, just the whole package, I'm, I'm going to remember this one for a long time and I, and I didn't have a vested stake in it. Uh, how about you, Wes? I mean, where does this stack up as, as some of the memories of the, the games you've covered and the teams you've covered? Yeah, I think we'll remember these guys for a while. Yeah, this is right up there, if not the, the biggest moment for my time you're covering. I mean, this is the, the first high school league public school football title in 77 years. I mean, what they did after all that we've seen these last decades that, I mean, team has been, I mean, we saw Bluffton get there over a decade ago in 2011. Great team led by Ken Cribb. And we, we saw some Buford teams get there before. I mean, last year, I mean, obviously – they were excited just to get there this year. It was a whole different focus. They wanted to win this thing from the start and they proved it. I mean, and, and to do it the way they did coming from behind so many times and just that will and, and, and that drive to, to do whatever it took in those moments, play in and play out, just, just, 
take it that one snap at a time and, and find a way to get back in it and use your athletes to to propel this team's success. It's it's really special. It's a well run team from top to bottom. Bryce Libran is I mean, our friend Ian Garen said he's he's his pick for coach of the year for the entire state of South Carolina. And you know, he may, he may not be wrong. I mean, Bryce Libran in, in four years, what he's accomplished and how he's led this group of young men. Uh, and, and let them by example and, and everybody just does their job so well. And I mean, those seniors have, have really bought in all 22 of them to, to do their part, but you know, Labyrinth, I mean, just what, what a job that, that he has done and just a fantastic coach, fantastic mentor. And these kids have just really grown to, to play for him, you know, just, just due to his ability to, to get the most out of them and, to put them in the right spots and, and to just motivate them to play their best. And, you know, just a, a really well-run team. And and just this was everything that we were hoping for, um, for a state championship game. Well played by both Powdersville and Buford. And, you know, the, the Patriots came out and they were the aggressors. I mean, they established a strong run game. Thomas Williams got going and went up early 14 nothing. I think you were right. The turning point was that fake punt. And, you know, it was – I kind of had my thought in my, my mind, uh, you know, I was thinking, yeah. It's a fourth and short Bryce Labyrinth, you know, maybe it gambles here. And and he certainly did. And uh, that kind of changed the scope of the game. I mean, if you put the ball back down 14, nothing, you're in a yeah. big hole, especially with Powersville yeah. and what they were able to do on those first few possessions. This script was so similar to what we saw against Dylan. Uh, get up that first score, then turn it over. And, you know, Buford still, you know, they had the back of the mind that they had the ability to come back. But I mean, this Powersville team, I mean, and, and I mean, they their running back I, I thought was a little better than what they they seen before, and yeah. Hatterzell was just they were executing. They they played like the better team for those first few minutes, and it was kind of a different feeling. But you know, Buford did what they do best. They adjusted and, and they just dug in and and hung tough and and found a way to get some stops. Responded, and then there was no stopping that run game. I mean, when you when you game plan, when you do all that you can as a Powersville team to prep defensively to stop those guys and still he can't find a way to do it. I mean, that just speaks to the dominance, like you said, Dylan, of that run game, Casey Fields, Colton Ferries. We may never see a duo like that of, of athletes again. And I, I I mean, one of my greatest memories here was covering that Hilton Ed Christian Academy team with Jace Blackshear and J.P. Peduzzi back in 2020 and how great that group was and that that duo of, of electric athletes that can kind of both take the reins under quarterback and produce on offense and, and just – you know, one of those teams that you remember for a long time, just a special group of talent, a great coach by, by Ron Panuzzi, and everybody really dialed in and, and playing for each other, uh, a band of brothers. And, and you know, Hilda and Chris Cummings was kind of like that that year. Buford was like that too. And we mentioned that but Rice Leifern said that chemistry, that bond between these players was special. And you need that to build a championship team. You need to play together and, and for each other. And, and that group, group of seniors especially, and everybody played a part in it. And, you know, this is a special memory. Um, we've had a couple here, uh, football, basketball, uh, some other sports as well here at Loco Sports uh, from all the, the heritage we've been able to cover these last few years. But this one certainly might stand out above the rest as a team that, that just believed even in tough situations, found a way to to continue on the path their goal and eventually achieve that, that ultimate goal they set out to. So, I mean, what a special team. Uh, Bryce Libran, what a job that he has done. And, and these players achieved that mission. And, uh, man, I mean, this is what you live for as a sports journalist, those, these kinds of stories and uh, a team like this that, that just does everything they do uh, so well. And, and, you know, it's just one of those teams that you look back on for, for five years, ten years from now, and uh, just recall these players and, and these special athletes that just – you know, found that spark and, and that mentality to to get the job done and, and give that extra 10, 20 percent. And, you know, I mean, that's that's what it takes to to perform an athletic setting. And uh, once again, just a special group and, and really proud of everyone involved and so happy for Jimmy, so happy for this Beaver Dye community. And, uh, you know, a, a historical day here for sports in the South Carolina Low Country. 
Yeah, I mean, like I said on, on Twitter and Facebook earlier today, uh, you know, we, we talk a lot about not very many teams get to finish their season or not very many athletes get to finish their career with a win. Well, not very many sports writers get to finish their season writing about a win either. Or, you know, most of us are having to talk to the sad people after a, a loss and uh, and try to write about it and, and, and not make anybody mad. And, you know, so it's fun for us to end it with a win too. We get to drive home, you know, happy, excited, talking about how happy we are for all these people we've been talking to nonstop for the past few months and seeing every Friday night. And, um, you know, and, and it, I think what makes this one really special is not just the, the game last night and the championship, but, but the whole really two year saga, you know, I mean, cause it's a continuation of last year. It's a new team, but certainly the, uh, you know, it's like a new season of a show. Some of the characters carry over and some of them don't and you have new ones, but, but it's a, a, a continuation of the story. Um, and, and so when you pair that, you know, that great season ending in heartbreak and, and almost, you know, to, for lack of a better term, humiliation, I mean, they, think they were kind of embarrassed at the showing that they put up there last year um and and so then on top of that you come back and you have some adversity early and you know you had some guys that you thought were going to be there who weren't there um had to to you know make some changes on the roster that weren't easy uh but but the team pulled together and uh and found a way and and the 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 whole was greater than some of its parts. And, um, and then the way they did it in the playoffs with the, the four straight comebacks and that resiliency and that just like shrugging it off when they get down two touchdowns right off the bat. You know, I think that's what makes it all so special is, is all of it kind of layers on top. And, and then that championship is just the cherry on top because we saw Bryce Lybrin ball his eyes out on that field a year ago and and you know lament that those seniors didn't get to win a state championship and now he gets back here with this team and and it's all smiles you know at the end and so yeah it, it's been a, a phenomenal run and you know i hope they can keep it rolling uh, you know certainly there's some gigantic you fill uh, shoes to fill um you know in that that roster but um you know i have the confidence that coaching staff is going to get the absolute most out of what they got and uh, they're going to be right there in the mix and in the region for sure. And if they get to the playoffs, you know, a bunch of them were on those sidelines this season when they fell behind four times and got it done and ended up wearing rings. So uh, don't count them out. They're, they're, they're going to be back. So uh, thanks so much to you guys for all your help all season. It's been such a blast with you. Had a great time and uh, you did a phenomenal job. I'm really proud of, of the effort we gave this season as well. Um, I think our coverage was, was top notch. Uh, especially for a skeleton crew that we have and, and uh, you know, everybody's hearts in it. So appreciate you guys appreciate our sponsors who made it all possible. Uh, thanks to everybody who jumped on these live shows with us all season. I think uh, we charted a new course for the future for loco sports and I'm excited to see where we can take it. Uh, you know, not just next football season, but going into this basketball season, wrestling season and going into spring and uh, the team continues to grow. And so does the audience. And uh, we're, we're really thankful for that. So for all of us at, at Team Loco, uh, to all of you out there in Loco Nation, thanks so much for a great football season. And until next season, go Loco.